All right, so what's happening here? I'm here on my timeline. I have this pretty wild fusion effect. It has 3D copies of your footage, particle lights, all of this. I have a fully cache clip, as you can see by this blue bar above my clip. I even have my timeline proxy resolution set to quarter, and yet it still can't play. It's still a horribly choppy mess. What is happening? I'm gonna tell you. Because in this video, we're gonna talk about the render cache. There are some tips and tricks along the way. If you have no idea what the render cache is, you're gonna learn a lot of very useful stuff. And in general, if you're trying to get smooth playback and resolve, there's some really important things in this video you need to know. Let me start off by answering our big question here. Changing the timeline proxy resolution can be very helpful, but you need to know that if you bump this down to half or quarter, it will completely ignore cache clips on your timeline. You see, if I stay at a quarter, yeah, I can't play this. But if I come up to timeline proxy resolution and completely disable that, bump that up to full, I can come back to the beginning of my clip and because this is cached, it plays back totally fine. A lot of times people will look for solutions for smooth playback and they will just try everything, not realizing how these interactions happen. And then they end up in a situation like I was in just a few seconds ago at the beginning of the video. Now I want to immediately jump to my next giant tip, kind of a tip. It's not even a tip, it's just something you need to know. That's a tip. And that is deleting or clearing your render cache. If you go in the menu to playback, uh, you do have this delete render cache, which you can choose all unused or selected clips, but this all option is still only on a per project basis. If you have multiple projects that you've been working on for any span of time, you will probably have so much render cache data and you could have so many projects that it would like not make sense at all to go project by project and deleting these. So instead, this is what you need to do. Uh, I need to find the exact location where my cache files are stored. I, I know that on my personal system, but if you don't, you can always come to file project settings. And if you scroll down, uh, you will see this working folders and cache files location. So you can navigate to that in your own browser or you can just click this browse button. This is a pop-up where you can like then choose a new folder to be your cache clip location. Uh, but you can still interact with files in this pop-up anyway, so it works for this sort of thing. Now I just recently, a day or so ago, cleared my own cache files, even though that would look really great in this video. In that case, I had 177 gigabytes of these files. I have had many times more of that in the past where I've let this sit for too long. Uh, but to know you just have these uh, two folders here, which are probably just two different projects I have. And even if you are still working in some of these projects, you can always regenerate these cache clips very easily. Uh, now, actually, in this prompt, you can't select more than one folder at a time because it is like a select folder <laughs> pop up. So just take note of where this is stored and then you can pull that up in another finder window like I have here. Um, I am going to select just these two project folders and click delete and it will very quick scan those, delete them. Uh, yeah, I had almost nothing there. <laughs> that will tell you how many files it finds, uh, how much space all those files take up, and then you can just watch as it clears them out. If you've been using Resolve for any length of time and you've never done this, track it down, clear it out, your hard drive will thank me. Now back to cache clips in your timeline a little more in general. Caching clips is super helpful, especially when you're often pulling in stuff from Fusion like I am, but there are a lot of small details around the render cache that anyone working in Resolve really needs to know. First, let's talk about what even gets cached. In playback under render cache, you have three options, none, smart, and user. None, hey, does nothing. But smart and user, uh, if you don't know what the difference is, it can be kind of confusing. I, I believe, all or most of the time, smart will naturally pick up more things and user has options that you define. If I hop back to my project settings here, you see, hey, we have some check boxes for user mode. We have cache transitions, uh, compositions, and cache any fusion effects in user mode. If you just want some more control, you can toggle these however you want. If you are on a pretty powerful system that can handle your fusion effects in real time, then yeah, maybe you don't need to cache them. The fusion effects option is a little interesting and it's something you need to be aware of. Um, because you have some extra control there. If I drag on a fresh copy of this clip and drag on that same 3D scene, I'll disable this first one just for, for no reason. You can see this is rough. And you can see, even if I play a little bit with my current settings, it's not caching anything. I can even toggle back between smart and user and we're not getting that same bar. Sometimes it pops up for a little bit, but it's not like fully kicking in. Specifically, these drag and drop fusion effects. Here's, here's what you need to know. If I right click on this, I have this option, render cache fusion effect filter, and then it will point to that specific effect on the clip. And now if I click that, we will get a pop up with a render cache and then that'll cache and we can play back. But I wanna follow that up with another really kind of sneaky render cache clip. You see, if you just sit and wait, it will slowly render this 
over time. But if you want to make sure um, that you're really putting your computer resources towards this caching, here's the thing I like to do. I can come forward and in my viewer, I'm gonna click uh, these little dots up here to get this menu and I'm gonna make sure that show all video frames is selected. Then I'm just going to play through my clip and once it gets to the part that is not cached, it is going to, yes, uh, slow down and chunk a bit, but now you see that as it goes, it is caching each new frame it plays. And if my thinking makes any sense, it's actively trying to play and process those videos. Uh, it's not just like sort of doing that in the background. So I haven't, I haven't really sat down and done too much testing on this, but like this, this should be faster, right? It feels good too, because you're saying like, hey, cache this and you are watching it cache instead of just like not really sure what's going on and you're just sitting back waiting. But hey, yeah, you can let it do its thing. It will just go click, click, click. I really like this effect. I built it for some benchmarking stuff. Um, there is no purpose for this effect to exist, but it does some cool stuff. But then, hey, it gets cached. You can hop back and watch your cool effect in smooth, smooth motion. It's not the most flashy thing in Resolve, but it's super useful stuff you gotta know. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.